Welcome to the video series, The Slit Lamp Exam. The name of this video is Components of the Slit Lamp. This video will explain the workings of the illumination tower, the observation system, and the mechanical arrangement of the slit lamp. The illumination tower. Central to any slit lamp is a powerful light source providing a well-balanced light spectrum that can be adjusted to the required intensity. Besides the light source itself, the main component of the illumination tower is an adjustable slit aperture within the illumination head. By simply turning the slit width control, the beam can be adjusted from wide to extremely narrow. This is important when examining semi-transparent structures in the eye without missing the necessary details. By turning the slit height control, the beam can be adjusted from high to short. This is helpful for measuring purposes in and on the eye. Most slit lamps include a diffuser, which is engaged by simply lifting it into position in front of the mirror. The diffuser creates an even unfocused illumination that covers a wide portion of the view that is especially important when making images. Different examination situations require the use of light filters. These are put into place by moving the filter lever. For example, you may decide to use the neutral density filter to reduce the illumination brightness for the examination of the posterior segment. The red-free filter can be used to enhance contrast and is particularly useful when seeking to improve the visibility of blood vessels. The blue filter is used during the anterior segment examination in conjunction with sodium fluorescein. The blue light excites the fluorescence of the dye. This is often used to view lesions on the ocular surface and the expression of the tear film in the Goldman tonometry. Modern slit lamps feature an option which allows you to tilt the illumination tower and therefore change the angle in which the slit is projected on the eye. This can be used to minimize reflections from the preset lens when examining the retina. Decentering the illumination tower decouples the shared plane of focus of the illumination tower and the observation system. This can be beneficial for examinations with indirect illumination and retroillumination. Remember to restore centering after examining. The observation system. The observation system provides a magnified view of the structures being observed. The magnification can easily be changed by turning the magnification dial to the desired level. In most lit lamps, the magnification ranges from 6 to 40 times. This allows the observer to use the appropriate magnification to obtain an overall view of the eye or to zoom in to observe subtle changes in greater detail. Before examining a patient, the eyepieces should be individually adjusted. If you wear spectacles while using the slit lamp, push the eye cups in. If you do not wear spectacles while using the slit lamp, pull the eye cups out. This ensures that the distance between the ocular and your eye is ideal. Then adjust the binocular to your interpupillary distance. Finally, your refraction and accommodation should be neutralized by setting the eyepiece. Most modern slit lamps today offer the ability to integrate a digital imaging system. Digital imaging systems allow image capture of the view through the microscope. This is beneficial for documentation, teaching and patient education. The yellow filter is an option that can be used in combination with the blue filter of the illumination system. It can be mounted permanently on the slit lamp and is easily engaged or disengaged as required. This filter combination improves the contrast when fluorescein is used by blocking the reflected blue light. The mechanical arrangement. The mechanical arrangement consists of the instrument base that supports the illumination tower and the microscope arm. The instrument base provides the platform to position the slit lamp in front of the patient and to control focus. The fine three-dimensional movements during the examination are controlled with the joystick. The illumination tower and the microscope arm share a common pivot. 
In normal use, the focus of the slit beam and that of the microscope are at the same point. During the slit lamp examination, the illumination tower and the microscope arm are moved independently of one another. The microscope arm is most frequently positioned directly in front of the eye, while the illumination tower is typically rotated to the user's left or right to illuminate the ocular structures from an angle. We've now reached the end of this episode of the slit lamp exam. Thank you for watching. This episode was made possible with the following contributions.